for checking out my talk, Estimating and the Key to KPIs to Profits. Well, KPIs are our key performance indicators. And I'm going to be diving in and literally going to show you how to figure out what it costs you to operate and how do we implement that in an estimating system? And then how do we go out and look at those key KPIs to know from hitting our hourly goals per cleaner and how to not emotionally raise our prices um, on the jobs that aren't hitting our hourly goals. But before we dive into that, I want to thank Amar and the whole ZenMade team um, and Heather over there for setting and putting together another world-class summit for the cleaning industry. And without any further delay, over the next 35 or 40 minutes, I'm going to literally break this down step by step for you. And I know a lot of the talks that we've been doing lately uh, in this post-COVID world live um, have been around automations and different features like that. But I thought it was time to really get back to basics right now with some of the uncertainty of inflation, skyrocketing wages for employees, and high gas prices. So we're going to look at how do we actually set up the foundational pieces in your business to go out and scale the business profitably and make sure that along the way, we know how to make course corrections and make sure we're having profits. So uh, without any further delay, I'm going to open up the screen here and dive right in. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer those as well during or at the end of the presentation. So unlike most of the uh, conversations and talks I've done, usually there is a slide deck. Uh, a lot of this is actually going to be done live from the sheet that we actually use at Simple Growth with hundreds of cleaning companies and well as hundreds of other service businesses. So the first thing we're looking at here is on the left-hand side, we've got our average wage calculator. So um, in this example, I'm going to be diving in and taking it if the cleaners are employees. Now, if they're 1099 contractors, um, some of this may not apply as far as the numbers here, but the whole setting up of the budget and how we build this out for an hourly wage that we go out and calculate our pricing on will apply. So if you are using 100% independent contractors, um, don't disengage because this is still going to be very important. And I've got a feeling that you may have some office staff and some things that may apply to this as well. So I um, just want to put that out there because I know, especially in cleaning, independent contractor model and the company that cleans my home uses in independent contractors. But I'm going to show you how to do this with employees and then how the independent contractors would actually fall into this model. So the first thing we're looking at is our average wage. And that's, that's the area here. So obviously, feel free to... Um, manipulate this. And depending on time, I may have actually make a copy of this so you can download for free. Um, but up before the talk, we've been slammed. I haven't had a chance to actually clone out a version that we can give away. But right here, we've got the number of the employees in division one. Division one is going to be our residential cleaning division. So maybe you do residential and commercial cleaning. I'm going to recommend, um, depending on some of these factors, that we may want to have two separate uh, parts of this sheet to calculate um, our average wage. So what we're going to be doing is plugging in and let's just say we've got a um, probably 10, 10 cleaners we're, and they're going to be solo cleaners or they could be groups of two, doesn't matter. Um, and what we would do is really write in the tech of the crew leader's name and we would put in uh, their hourly wage. So let's just say we've got 15 for a tech and maybe 22 for a crew lead. Now, depending on um, your cleaning season, traditionally, that's going to be every week of the year. So let's say we've got 52 weeks um, and with everything, holidays and everything, let's call it 51 weeks times eight hours a day times five days. So on average, we're going to be budgeting about 2,040 hours of payroll. Now that's going to be for everybody in the, the business here. Um, and I'm just going to have this as tech one, here and then I'm going to roll that right down here because um, unless they're working as teams, the, the pay wage is probably going to be pretty similar uh, based on seniority. Some will be high, some will be low. Uh, but let's just say for today's conversation, we're going to plug in some some general numbers here that could apply to these different people, and we're going to dive in and do an hourly wage. Maybe one is hanging out around 23 an hour, but we're all going to budget for all of them at a full five days a week, 40 hours a week ballpark. So uh, obviously you need to tweak this to your business. But what we've done now as we scroll down is we've got our average wage and we've got our total hours. So if you're budgeting for your labor, we've got 20,400 hours 
of payroll liability that people should be working in the field. Now, if you're using a paid performance or piece rate system, obviously that's going to be either based on budgeted hours or it's going to be based on a percentage of the dollar amount you're charging. Same idea here though. We need to figure out what is the budgeted hours. Now, the positive thing is you fix that labor cost, which is usually at least 60% of our overhead. So if we can dial that in through a pay performance system, that would be great. Um, but either way, this is a methodology for a budget that we actually want to be able to go in. Benefit, like I said, with a piece rate of pay performance is you fix those labor costs. Now, our average wage now is going in and taking all of our 10 techs and our average wage now is $19.40. And then if there is any projected overtime. So in this instance, maybe you're not projecting overtime. In this instance, I said 5% of my payroll is going to be in overtime. So we need to figure that out if that's going to play out. But if there is 0%, that's $19.40. But we, we do want to plan what does that look like um, with overtime or without overtime because we need to plan for that. So if you're trying to be conservative, um, 5% in there. We've got 20,400 hours. On average, we're taking the hours times the average wage. So we don't care who's on each particular cleaning team, but on average, if this assumption comes correctly, we've got total payroll liability of $415,548 uh, that we are paying out in wages. Now, before we get into that, that does not include labor burden. That's just the hourly wage. So the next thing we really want to take a look at is going into division one, which back up here was our residential cleaning division. So as we go in, you should be calling your uh, payroll company and be able to get certain numbers. Now, some of these may not apply, but we are looking things such as company share of FICA, federal employment, state unemployment, liability, vacation pay, holiday pay, health insurance, um, company bonus fund. If these apply, you should be adding these into a similar sheet as a percentage of the dollar. Now, once you have this in as a percentage of the dollar, in this fictitious example here, um, it's 19%. So labor burden shown as a percentage is 19.16%. So for every dollar of payroll, we're paying about 19.16% uh, so basically 19 cents on the dollar. Now, if our hourly rate for our cleaner here was, let's say $16, depending on the software platform you're working on, I'm going to keep this completely independent, whether you're using a variety of the great softwares in the home cleaning industry or CRMs, um, there should be an area to track this. If your software does not have this, um, a Google sheet like this is a great way to place this. But we do, in most of the softwares, want to know our hourly rate with our burden. So that $16 an hour cleaner is actually calling us $19.04. Or that $22 an hour cleaner is really is costing us 26.18 and at any time they're in overtime would be 39.27. So these are particular numbers that we want to go in. We want to get that labor with labor burden. And we also want to go in and calculate the wage. Now, what I would recommend in a larger company, especially, is label it tech one or whatever you want to call them, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through. And then when you have an actual person in there, we can go in and put their name next to it. But now as you add or subtract certain cleaners, we have a budgeted time. So if you're going to delegate your hiring and we lose the $21 an hour tech number four, we are able to go and say, hey, in your hiring process, what you have to work with is $21 to stay within budget. And if it changes, these numbers can be manipulated in the later part where we actually build out a budget. I'm going to show you how to do that on a very high level and then how to take all these numbers and drive them uh, directly into a budget. So we've got our average wage calculator. We're going to create our average wage. We know that we're spending uh, 20400 in um, actual payroll hours in the field only. We're not concerned about the office or estimating. This is production only, and it's going to cost us 415548 before labor burden and payroll processing. So hopefully that makes sense. We want to do that per residential commercial division if you have separate divisions. Um, and then we are going to go up here and look at our vehicle. So some employees are driving their own vehicles. We're doing mileage reimbursement. So in that scenario, you would want to actually project out what the mileage re reimbursement would be based on the average of your market size. In this example, I've done it. So we've got a Ford Focus as the cleaning vehicle that the dr cleaners drive around. I'm not talking about 
the owner in a, or an estimator driving around doing QC and interacting. This is production uh, vehicles. We'll talk about how to take the fixed G and A general administrative vehicles and put that into the budget as well. So what we've got is we've got this Ford Focus here. I'm going to put this in. I've got some numbers just for speed of the talk here. Um, but basically, let's let's say this is a we bought this car uh, for twelve thousand dollars. We're going to go in. How many years was it financed? We've financed over five years. Uh, interest rate was six percent. And years of use, let's just say we're going to get uh, eight years out of it. And then the salvage value at the end is how much are we actually going to be able to sell this for once we get rid of it? So let's put in, uh, say, $6,000. It's depreciated over, uh, it's probably going to be close to 4000 So after eight years, we still get four grand when we trade in or sell it out. Now, hours per day, work days per year, I put 250 and work an eight hour day. So now we're in a, a overhead remodel here. We're going to be recovering that car not only when it's driving, but the curb time, because that's a larger fixed asset um, that is basically incurring overhead that we have to recover in our hourly bill rate for our cleaning service. Now, it's come up with our, uh, our operating costs. We've got our annual insurance, annual licensing. And as we scroll down here, we're going to put in uh, miles per year. So I'm going to say we're driving 15,000 miles a year. Miles per gallon is 22 miles uh, per gallon. Obviously, this is fictitious. You got to do some research and get the actual hard numbers for your car and vehicle in there. Uh, fuel cost per gallon, uh, I said 350. Uh, if you're watching this live right now, uh, I'm gonna put this in at five bucks and a gallon because that's probably about what we're all paying now, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, oil change interval uh, is gonna be at 5,000 miles and the oil change cost, let's put that at $70 now with a little inflation. And the tire change interval is gonna be every 25,000 miles and a new set of tires cost me 500 bucks. So as we go down with additional maintenance costs, this car per hour, as soon as it leaves the office to all the jobs and back to your office or shop is costing you $4.68. Operating budget for the car is $7,358 and a monthly operating budget now is $613.17 on average. So if you remember back to our average wage here, we had 10 technicians. So let's say all these 10 cleaning technicians are solo cleaners. So we're going to pop in. We've got 10 Ford Focuses here that are wrapped. So the wrapping and the advertising is not included in here. That would be included in the budget that we're going to be building out for the marketing budget. So why we're building all this, just to remind everybody, if you're just jumping in live here, is we're, we're trying to set the financial foundations of the business for wage, average wage, labor burden, and now the vehicles um, in the in the cleaning um, business. So we've got, uh, if you remember here, so you've got five or 414,000 uh, in payroll. I'm gonna actually do some quick math here on the sheets and uh, say, all right. And then I'm just gonna go in here and add this up here. So if I took our payroll times 1.19, which is our labor burden. So really our total payroll liability with labor burden is 494,502. I've got 10 cars. The hourly rate per car is our 468. So right now, labor with labor burden, 494,502. And now our cars with gas maintenance and repairs are costing us $93,580. So that's going to be two of our biggest hitters right now off the bat. So hopefully that makes sense. And then what I'm going to do is scroll up, up here. Um, and for time's sake, I'm not going to go in and fill all this out, but I want to show you what is driving in and how do we actually set up this budget to come to the final conclusion of our hourly goal of what we need to charge per hour per cleaner, including drive time, what it's costing us per hour before we make a profit. That's our break even per man hour or per cleaner. And then in addition, um, a couple other big things that we should have set up for scheduling is what is the minimum amount I need to to go out and schedule and bill out per day per cleaner to make sure this budget actually is accurate and works the way it should. So first thing is our overhead area. So this is where we're building some detail. And then down below, we're going to consolidate it down and literally have a advertising line item. So maybe we're doing some every door direct mailings and Facebook ads. So we would plug those in. Any other advertising you've got here, we're going to plug in. So as we scroll in, we have total advertising and the total percent of sales. We'd have those percentages of what that looks like. Uh, depreciation, any office equipment that we have, uh, computers, printers, things like that, 
we should be depreciating them over three years because traditionally every three years with technology, uh, even a MacBook Pro like I've got here that I'm doing the presentation on, we're going to assume we are replacing those every three years. As we're rolling down, we're going to look at any donations, charitable events, do subscriptions such as Chamber of Commerce, Better Business Bureau, insurance. We're going to look at content policy, life insurance, disability insurance. Uh, folks, if you don't have life insurance or disability insurance, we should be building this in here because if we ever go down on the job, we need to have that in the budget and life insurance. Side note on life, uh, life insurance, double check with your uh, legal and tax advisors, but uh, life insurance can be put into the budget, but it should not be written off as a business expense because if you do pass away, that is the life insurance policy payout is taxable at that point. Uh, but we can build it in there and possibly do a personal draw or have that part of your compensation. But that's a way to build the cost of your policies into your overhead recovery there. We've got interest in bank charges. Um, we've got our overhead downtime. So if you're projecting maybe breakdowns, if you got older vehicles, any issues, um, if you're stripping and waxing floors at night and the equipment occasionally breaks and you're down, you're broke down for a few hours while you're repairing it, that's a place to go in and, and guess uh, and make some assumptions of time. So you actually, the extra couple hours that you're, you're not being productive is actually included in the budget to cover that. We've got our office supplies, CPA, consultants, office rent, and then we've got our salaries. This is our non-production folks. So if you're going in, we built our average wages for the production. Now we need to build in our administrative staff, owners, managers, QC, trainers, anybody who's not production, we're going to build that in there. And this is non-labor. Now you may ask, well, what if some of our managers are actually in the field producing revenue, cleaning, and then they also go out and um, do estimates and maybe some QC. So you want to balance those hours and the different pay rates uh, from the average wage sheet and the actual uh, budget itself. So instead of working 2,040 hours, maybe they work 1,000 hours in the field and 1,000 hours in the office. So that's uh, something you want to be aware of there so we're not double dipping. Any small tools, supplies uh, that are in there, general supplies, uh, taxes. Some areas have uh, business privilege taxes. You know what they are if they're in your area. Upstate New York does not, but that's something you'd be looking at. Telephones, cell phones, um, all the answering service VAs would be in here. Travel, entertainment, seminars. Um, then we've got our utilities, garbage fees, um, any materials. And as we go in, we've got our uh, overhead vehicles. So those are the estimate vehicles. So if we have an additional forward focus is from a, an estimator, uh, we know what that's going to look like because we've already calculated it for the field. So we would take that yearly cost and put that into our budget but because that's a non-production vehicle. Um, and that's going to be accounted for separately sometimes depending how we set this up, whether it's a single or multiple overhead recovery budget. Uh, right here, we're going to do basically a simple single, single overhead recovery. And that's probably pretty appropriate for uh, the home cleaning industry as well. Uh, some of the other industries we work in with lawn care where they're using heavy equipment and different things like that, uh, a multiple overhead recovery system, a more system they call it, would be more appropriate. So we could bill out jobs that are heavy in equipment versus jobs that are labor heavy. So if you're doing um, pressure washing, soft washing, you've got different lifts that are running several hundred thousand dollars, um, that may be an option for you. But this is the more general budget that you would set up in a cleaning company, residential or commercial, that's not getting that equipment. Um, so I did want to make that clarification here. License bonds, education, uh, big one here, uniform, computer and software systems, uh, the softwares you're using, uh, whether it's ZenMade, QuickBooks, all the other ones, they should be in here. And bad debt, uh, obviously this is pretty high number, but you could say, hey, uh, at 5%, of gross sales is going to be bad debt. But let's look back historically and figure out what's the bad debt that we're writing off. And you may actually want to put, um, if you do, if you historically have any refunds through dissatisfaction, budget that in here. So we have it in the budget. And when we have to refund something uh, for a cleaner that's maybe training and something happens, um, also damages if we're scratching the stoves or the refrigerators with stainless steel, if that happens occasionally, maybe you want to put something in there. So if it does happen, you've got the money to actually pay cash out of pocket budgeted or the uh, insurance deductible as well. Because let's face it, at scale, these things are going to happen. Uh, no matter how good our training is, it's just human nature. It does happen. 
uh, office, officer retirement, SEP accounts, those things should be in here. So now the business is actually accounting to give you a retirement plan as we go out. Now, what we've done here is we want to go in. This is basically, that's our pre-homework to build a budget. And all that is going to be driven down here in a minute. And I'll show you how that lays out. Um, but yearly profit and loss statements, we want to gross, gross sales for the year. Um, and then we've got our material, including tax and our labor. So that is from our average wage that we've done. So total scheduled hours times the average wage. And then we add that 19% labor burden. So remember, I total those all up. Um, on the other side, those numbers come in now. We already got the math done. Any subcontractors, so the 1099 um, IC, independent contractor, you would stick them there if you utilize them. Uh, any equipment, so that is if you are running some, some lifts and things like that for commercial cleaning or soft wash or pressure washing in any rental equipment. And that's going to get your total cost of sales and gross profit. And the final thing here is... Uh, we're going in and the advertising depreciation, all the stuff that we did up top in detail is now being combined and dropped into each one of these. So remember we did uh, 10,000 in every door direct and 5,000 in Facebook ads, that 15,000 is here under that single line. So we've taken the granularity and just chunked it down. Um, so everything was above, we went through, I'm not gonna reiterate it, but this is everything right here that would be copulating from up above and then we get in, so if we had numbers in here, we have the total overhead to be recovered, so the total expenses and the percentage of gross sales. And finally, we'd have our net profit or loss and our profit margin. So those are all the numbers. What I'm recommending is you take this then and in QuickBooks Online or QuestBooks Desktop, you set up a budget and you can run a budget versus actual in an accrual basis. So you can run weekly um, or daily reports to make sure you're on track each week and each month for your end of the year goals. Cause what track it is tracked has happened. But if we wait to the end of the season and say, Hey, how did we end up? We can't make those course corrections. But the most important thing right now that we're going to get out of this here is, um, if this was all filled out, I've filled this out with some numbers. Um, you know, don't take those, these numbers as what they should be, but just, um, I put some ballpark numbers in here just to show you how it goes in. But once this budget is done, we'd have some formulas in here and it would give us how much revenue per man hour we need to generate. That's our goal. It would give us our break even. So if it was costing us $35, the difference between 35 and 62.50 is our profit. As long as everything goes to plan and we hit those budgeted times, we don't damage some things. Um, and then our daily sales goal per cleaner. Um, at 500. So obviously these are fictitious. I put them in, but you can see how that all plays out. Now, what we want to do is take these air, these numbers and drive them into a production rate based estimating system. So like I said, this is software or platform independent, um, but most softwares have it in there, or you can use a Google sheet just like this and take these numbers and then put them into the quoting uh, portion. But I want to break this down because there, there is a lot of value here. And then I'm going to show you how to drive these estimates, the different ways you estimate, and then some key reports that we can run to make sure if we're not hitting our hourly goal, how much do we raise that price with no emotion? And how can we create accountability and clarity around our budget and everything we're doing to make sure that um, our cleaners are hitting their goals and they know what's going on with a quality standard? So we're going to align the production with a. Um, a quality standard and get that done. So now we've got our 6250 break even at 35 an hour and $500 is our, our, our goal every time we go to schedule. So now the office can schedule without the business manager owner having to babysit it. So if we go into our services tab here, I'm going to do a, a weekly cleaning example. And our custom field, I'm going to base this on home square footage. I'm going to show you the basic version of this and I'll show you the more advanced version. So what we're going to do is always look at it. Now you can see I've taken our 6250 from the budget is our hourly revenue goal and our 35 is our break even. So the difference is our profit. So I'm going to say my base price to show up for a weekly cleaning is 150 bucks. Now based on that, that gives the cleaner 2.4 hours to actually clean it. That's for a solo cleaner, one person. Now if you have two cleaners, that 2.4 would be divided in half. Um, but now we're always going to at least assume it's one cleaner and then 
um, divvy that out as we dispatch or go out and, and schedule those jobs. Right now, we're assuming one hour or 2.4 hours covers that $150 cleaning on a weekly reoccurring. Now, what you're going to do is say from one square foot to, let's say, 1,500 or actually I'm going to say 1,200 square feet is that cleaning. So if it calls between one and 1,200, we charge 150 and we know it is taking us at a maximum 2.4 hours. And based on these numbers, which obviously are a little fictitious coming out of the fake budget, um, we'd have a 73% profit margin. And what we can say is every 100 square feet over the first 1,200 square feet is X amount of dollars more. So if we looked at it and we kept everything the same, and we took 2.4 hours and divided it by 120 parts of a 100 parts of 1200 it's 0.02 so basically every 100 square feet is 0.02 so if we said okay that's 0.02 is 1 minute if we plug that 0.02 in here we'd have to charge a dollar 25 per 100 square feet now obviously i'm making up some of this production here just for an example, but you get the idea is if we knew it took 2.4 hours for that 1200, we could back that out of what our production rate is per 100 square feet. And every 100 square feet over the first 1200, we need to charge an extra dollar 25. It should take 0.02 hours, which is a minute, and it costs us 70 cents. The difference between 70 cents and 125 is our net bottom line profit. So we're going to do this for our deep cleans, top to bottom deluxe, weekly, bi-weekly, and probably every four weeks. And obviously, the square footage, if your base price stays the same, needs to shrink, or your bi-weekly price needs to go up. So I'm going to go in and just basically copy this out here and give you both examples. And then I'm going to show you how to add in different variables. So we'll do something very easy like a linen change or uh, if we want to add extra money for people or pets, things like that. So. If we went in here, our weekly cleaning, I I'm going to make this, as I copied it down, I'm going to make this bi-weekly cleaning. And there's two different options, like I said. So if we are saying it is going to take 2.4 hours, we would shrink this down to maybe 1,000 square feet. And that's our base price. So the base price is, two, is 150 either way. I would probably recommend, let's just say, uh, 2.4 hours times, let's say it takes about 30% longer for a biweekly cleaning. That is 3.12 hours. So based at 3.21 hours times your 65.20 an hour, your base price now for the biweekly is 195 up to 1200 square feet. And I'm going to take our 0.02, which is a minute and times that by 30%. And now it's $1.63 per hundred versus $1.25. So as it lays in, it will calculate that out. Um, and it's going to cost you $155 to produce that. So this is how we would predominantly set this up in any software system. We need to blueprint it and then execute it. So you'd never build a house without a blueprint. You never should build a pricing matrices or data table in a software, no matter what it is without checking your math here and actually having executable blueprint. Now, the cool thing is, let's say inflation and everything continues. We have to go back up to $65 an hour from 62. All I'd have to do in the sheet now is put 65 in and that $1.50 um, here either reduces the hours or if I undo this here and leave 2.4 and say 2.4 times 62.50, it's a buck fifty, but if I went up to sixty-five, now it automatically calculates that for next year, fifty-six dollars. So um, the idea is, once we've got the blueprint, we can build the formula where you just change the hourly rate and you change the expense per man hour, and everything updates. And you can update in your software once a year, or twice a year when that changes. So we've kind of covered the ability for your weekly and biweekly. Now, what about the other variables here? So let's let's do something really easy here. Um, number of pets. So dogs, cats, whatever that is. And that is a custom field here. Now, the thing is your client is never going to see this. So in some softwares, um, or if you're using Google Sheet, it's considered a child or subservice. So the client doesn't see it, but behind the scenes, you see this as your imaginary estimate checklist. So this is going to play out really nicely to get this done. So let's say we include up to two pets. 
we find out that that doesn't really change. So I'm going to take our 62, 15, 35 per break even and put it in here. And I'm going to say one to two pets is $0. But every one pet over two pets, let's say on average, um, we want to charge an extra $20 per cleaning or $15 per cleaning. And this could be the same thing between one and two linen changes is X amount and every additional linen change and after the first two is this. Um, so this is how we would build those variables or sub, subs in. Um, based on this here equals that divided by this. So if you have those numbers, it would actually give you an extra almost 15 minutes, 0.24 man hours per pet to clean the house. And it's costing you 840. So you're charging 15 per pet after the first two and it's costing you 840. So you can do this and build this down in another in area. So now, obviously this works out. It's pretty simplistic. We're doing it per hundred square feet after the base price. The other option is a price break model. And I'm gonna make this our weekly cleaning and then dive into the rest of the content. But I wanna literally lay some, some framework, how we build this out before we scale the rest of the business. So our custom field for weekly cleaning, once again, is square foot of the home, a little square footage, a cleaning square footage. So we said in our original example, we said one to 1200 was 150 bucks. And I brought my 62, 50 and 35 over here. So one to 1200 is 150 and that 0.24 is there already. So what we could do is say from 1200, one square feet to 2200 is, and we can go in and let's just say that's going to be three hours. And then between 2200 and 3500 hours is maybe 3.5. And between 3500 and 4000, let's call that 4.25. So what we've done is created a budgeted time. And then we can go in and equal the time times our 62.50 an hour. And if you're using a Google Sheet and you can see my formula here, I'm putting a dollar sign on the front end of that J. That's going to hold the place of our right here and then i can click on it and actually drag that down now when working with a lot of cleaning companies traditionally at four or five thousand square feet whatever it is that variable stops we don't have overages literally after that we have to do an in-home estimate or at least have a conversation but this is how we would actually build out a similar model with price breaks uh basically for efficiency based on the house getting bigger and we can build that in um, so that will allow you to base the pricing on the projected budgeted time based on the production rate for a weekly, bi-weekly, top to bottom, move in, move out. What are those cleanings are? We build that in. But once again, we can check our projected profit and we blueprint it here and then implement it in our desired software that we use. So hopefully that makes sense. Comments or questions, drop them in the live chat and I'll try to get to those at the end of this uh, presentation. So quick review before we dive into the rest of um, the different ways of estimating some pro tips. We want to go in before we start, we need to create our average wage with all our technicians and the hours they're working. We're going to sum total that. How many hours? What's the payroll? And then we're going to go in and create our labor burden as a percentage of the dollar. Once we add that up, that 415 actually turned into 494. We want to take any of our vehicles for production in the field and go in and break down all the information as far as purchase price, finance, salvage value, oil changes, tire changes, gas, all that good stuff. We're gonna go in and get our price per hour and we wanna include those hourlies all the way from the start of the shop, all the way back to the shop or office. We need to recover the, over, over the curb time on those. And we plug in the number of vehicles, hourly rate per car was 468, total cost of the, the cars all in was 93,580. And then we go in and create our overhead area. And we go in and create our projected profit and loss. Drive the top in, figure out our gross profit, profit percentage. And then we pull our overhead from the top, granulized, and sub it up, sub it up here, just each line. And at the bottom, we are going to have our overhead recover, percentage of sales, net profit. And at the end, we're getting our revenue per man hour goal, break even per hour, difference is our projected profit. And we set daily sales goals based on some of the metrics here. So we're not going out and only scheduling two or $300 worth of cleaning when our daily sales goals built out in this was based on 500. So now we have an accountability factor for the scheduler to make sure what's in the budget actually happens. So hopefully that wasn't too much, but I really 
uh, have never dove into this part of this on any of these talks. Um, in any of my talks, to be honest, the lawn care, home cleaning, pressure washing. Uh, but I think this is really the foundational piece that we all are missing. And then we really need to um, build out those services with the other sub services, as far as uh, number of people, number of pets. Uh, if you're working with Debbie Sardone, traditionally she has a dirt code um, of how clean or not how clean the house is. You could build in a dirt code as well. We've done that in the CBF business in a box for her. Um, and you can also do a price break model this way here. So that pretty much covers the setup. So let's dive in to the rest of the content today of how we actually go in and estimate for success and track profitability in your cleaning company. So there's really three ways of estimating. And when we first all go into business, uh, it's market-based pricing. So we go out and we look at a home and we say, well, I think in my market that weekly cleaning is worth 165 bucks, an hour, 165 bucks a cleaning. So that's what we actually go out and do. And that's what we charge for the cleaning. Obviously not the right way of doing it. So as we start to evolve, we go into a process I like to call guesstimating based on your experience and your hourly rate. So if you think it's going to take two hours to clean that home and your goal is $60 an hour, two times 60, is 120 bucks. That's the, that's, you should be charging 120 or two hours times 60 bucks. You've got $120 for the cleaning and it should take you two hours with one cleaner. Now, as we evolve in, we've kind of alluded already, already where we really want to go is non-emotional pricing. So we can pull the home square footage off the internet or get it from the client with some other variables and base a production rate based estimating system based on square footage, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, people, pets, dirt code, whatever that is. We want to be able to drive that process. So hopefully in your evolution, we're not doing market-based pricing, but we're taking our guesstimating and in our software, running some reporting and actually figuring out what your production rate is based on the way you guys are doing the cleaning. Next thing is guesstimating. So that's time-based. So that's based on your experience, how long you think it's going to take. You need to, if you're in that guesstimating phase, you need to determine that dollar per man hour service charge. And there's some things we need to consider. How many minutes is it going to take per one, for, per one person to do it? How many hours for how many days? So if you've got a post-construction clean, you may be quantifying this and how many days it's going to take, not how many minutes or hours. Um, but in this, I will suggest the more granular you can get in a unit, the better because it's going to allow you to be more competitive. Now, if you're just billing by the day at 65 bucks an hour for an eight-hour day, that obviously is only selling eight-hour blocks. But in post-construction, that may be the way to go. Um, additional areas that we want to consider are um, square footage, number of rooms, um, small, medium, large bedrooms, bathrooms, whatever that is. Start tracking those custom fields or variables. So in your software, you hopefully can start running some reports to see how long it actually takes for those things on the weekly, bi-weekly, every four-week basis. So we can start to build some data into the system to get to that production based estimating. Um, other thing to think about is shop time in the morning, any AM meetings for the team, and drive time. We need to include those um, on average in that pricing to recover that full eight or 10 hour day for that cleaner. So uh, use a form for job intake. So you could use a Google form if your software has a form. Uh, the idea here is we want to be able to take your mobile out or on the computer and be able to plug that data in there. Um, so when you pull up the estimate, that data from the form loads and it non-emotionally would calculate a price a budgeted time and a cost before profit. Um, and also, you know, we, we do want to look at that drive time, the frequency of cleanings, the number of people, number of pets, and the current cleanliness of the homes. These are the things we want to take note of and potentially be able to intake it non-emotionally through a form and through those formulas that I set up in the data tables that the system calculates it for you. So you're not um, having the ability to emotionally price or override the software. And that's how we set that up uh, when we work with cleaning companies and multiple platform softwares actually do that. Take the emotion out of that pricing. And you can train somebody that's really never cleaned a home to do that if there's certain non-emotional variables such as square footage, number of people, number of pets, and cleansiness. So production rate based estimating obviously is the ultimate goal of what we want here. Um, and that's based on a production rate and the data you have in your system or industry averages. If you're using somebody like Debbie Sarone with CBF and her certified CBF coaches, um, they do have some great uh, production rates that are proven and tested, um, which I've actually seen in my house and up to a house that was seven or 8,000 square feet. They actually uh, are so accurate no matter the market. Um, so that's a good starting place if you haven't looked at it. But best data is really your data. Get it into your software and track it. Run some reports. And we need to determine that dollar per man hour service charge, which I showed you how to do 
uh, in the beginning of this. And we're also additionally, and we're doing production rate based estimating. We want to track that square footage, the size of the rooms and the number of items. Those are still very important when we get to the production rate based estimating, not just your guesstimating phase. We want to get away from that market based pricing, of course. So how will you present this pricing to your prospects? So there's several different ways in an estimate that we have seen and implemented uh, exact price per visit. If you're bidding over the phone, maybe a high, low pricing to take the uh, risk out of it for you and the customer. Um, exact price for a certain set amount of visits with an overage, more of a commercial cleaning contract per se. Hourly with a minimum to show up. So maybe it's 150 bucks to show up and $50 per man hour or a retainer with overages. So there's different ways that we can, based on residential, commercial uh, cleaning that we can go in and how will you invoice? Let's think about that as a daily right after each job, weekly or monthly, depending on the contract and the uh, residential or commercial setting you're in. But these are things we wanna think about as we're presenting that estimate. So I, I recommend enhancing your estimates of standard videos and pictures for all estimates. So in my estimates, in my service business, every service had a, an estimate, a video and best, and, embedded in the estimate line explaining the service, what was included in the estimate, what wasn't included, and our satisfaction guarantee. So right here, we're talking about the ability to do that. Um, and we had videos in the body as well. So that is on the estimate itself. Now we can personalize it. So if you're doing a commercial estimate or a walkthrough on residential, this area here um, is we can have on-site personal videos in the estimate body, the description estimate line, and a couple other places. A pro tip is if you use the YouTube creator app here, you can see it here in the red, um, get that in the app store. You can actually walk around selfie style in the house and film the home and pick out or the building and talk about the areas you're going to clean and how you're going to tackle it. And that video of the live estimate can be embedded in a lot of softwares uh, estimating um, platform that would play live, a live video of their property inside the essence. You can imagine there's an emotional connection there because they're walking through their own property or building while you're estimating. So that's something we also did in my service business uh, for several years. Um, YouTube Creator though allows you to upload that directly without having to use your computer. And then you mark it as uh, not public, unlisted, and then you can link back to that in the estimate itself by grabbing that off YouTube. That's a great tip to be able to get the video content into YouTube immediately without having to go to your computer, download it, upload it, and everything in between. Sales Pipeline. Uh, this product is, I'm showing you here, is a product called Logi. It's a third-party software that integrates with a lot of different softwares. Uh, 20 days to close, if you've seen any of my talks, is our automated estimate follow-up. So once we get those estimates out, it's important to follow up on them over the 20 days through automated email, text message, and yes, phone calls. Um, so this is just an example of as we're building these estimates, it's not only good enough to get the estimate out, we need to follow up. We need a visual sales pipeline, in my opinion. And what we've seen here is the estimate date, where it's at, uh, one through 20 days, chunked out at zero, three, five, seven, 10, 13 days, and so on. It lets us know if they are a, a lead or a client, and how did we how did they hear about us? They're the lead source. All that data is right there in the assigned salesperson. So once we get the estimate out, we need some data to track that. Employee job costing. Remember, we talked about that employee wage. Uh, this is a one of the softwares we work in. We had the hourly wage here, and we had our labor with labor burden. That's going to feed into um, a reporting system like Logi, so you have that non-emotional data at your fingertips. Employee data. Once again, this is another screenshot of that Logi software, uh, but we've got the example here of it has budgeted hours. It's okay. We have actual hours. We have revenue per man hour and we have total revenue. So really what we're looking for is a good start and stop time in a mobile application or manually typed into a software. Data is good. We have a budgeted time that's, that's appropriate and we have a dollar amount. And then we're able to take a look at it. It was what was the desired dollar per man hour rate and did we actually hit it? And then we had a labor cost effect. What did it cost while we're on site? And then we had a, a drive time cost effect. So this granularity of the labor uh, per job, as imagine we had 50 or 52 cleanings in the year, we would be able to see all that data for the whole year. And then uh, we can show weekly transparency of where we're hitting our, our goals and not hitting the goals for all our jobs for that each day and each week per cleaner. Um, in addition, we had two solo cleaners meet together on a deep cleaner top to bottom deluxe. It would take the percentage of the job that they work and associate it with their productivity. Final thing is how to raise prices without emotion. The idea here is that we've got two 
uh, services here at $54.28. Uh, obviously, you'd probably have all 50 cleanings. But if we use this, this basic example, we generated $57.30 per cleaner per hour. Um, and we would go in and say, okay, we'd plug in. Oh, hold on. We would go and plug in our desired dollar per man hour. So if it was 60 and we we're only making 57.30, the sheet says, hey, our per visit price of 54.28 now needs to be raised by $2.56 the penny to achieve our goal. So based on the data that's going in the system, it's going to give you the ability to raise your prices non-emotionally to the penny based on your weekly, bi-weekly, and other services. Um, next thing is we, we've gone in through Logi and created automated daily and weekly reports. Um, and we're going in and checking the clock time, the budgeted time, and the job amount. And just like the Excel sheet I just showed you, we're going to be able to raise the price of the job as a percentage. So um, if home cleaning crew number two right here was uh, Bill and Lori, and these are the jobs they did, both of these jobs would actually give you a percentage of budget. So we look at it as if it's at 100%, you're at budget. If you're at 125%, you're actually 25% under budget. And if you're 80%, you're actually the difference is you're 20% over budget. So we can tell the cleaner, if you gave 100%, you hit the budget of time. If you gave 125%, you kick butt today with the quality constraints. That's how we can use these on a dry erase board or TV in the office or shop each day to show transparency and clarity amongst how each crew is performing. So the final part is this is the automated version of that Excel sheet, how to raise your price to the penny. Um, this top line here, we've checked all the data and on average they need to raise, raise their price $5.04 per visit. This here is just a missing bad data, it's red, they need to check it. Um, and on average here, this needs to be raised by $12.90. This one's hitting our, our hourly goal. So the average price increase is $0. So that's how we go in. We run this report traditionally twice a year. I like to run it around July and then the end of the year, November, December, raise the prices on all the uh, cleanings that aren't hitting your hourly goal. So just like Jack Welch at GE, he, where he got rid of the bottom 10% of the company and got better customers, now we don't have to go out and raise our prices across the board down emotionally because if we're making $100 an hour on one property and our goal is only 50, you never want to raise that price because that's a really good client. You don't want to alienate your client base and tell your best customers to go search for an option that's cheaper. We keep the prices on the ones we're hitting our hourly goal on based on our new hourly goal each year. And if they're not hitting that goal, we raise that price without emotion through non-emotional data. And that's how we create a profitable and predictable system in the business for a cleaning company that can be delegated to the staff. So right now we're just about wrapping up. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat or hit me up at mike at simplegrowthsystems.com. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks again to Amar, ZenMade team, and Heather for getting on another amazing summit. Mike Callahan with Simple Growth. Hopefully you are a little more well-versed in estimating and the key KPIs to profits in your cleaning business.